I am Martin Picard, and on behalf of CME Outfitters, I would like to welcome you and to thank you for joining us for today's activity entitled Case Challenge Incorporate Real World Evidence in the Management of Hormone Receptor Positive Metastatic Breast Cancer. Today's activity is brought to you by CME Outfitters, an award-winning accredited provider of continuing education for clinicians worldwide. I am Martin Picard. I am an honorary professor of oncology at the Université Libre de Bruxelles. I am the scientific director of the Jules Bordet Cancer Institute in Brussels, Belgium, and the co-founder of the Breast International Group, BIG. We have two learning objectives today. Learning objective one is to assess evidence on real-world clinical experience for CDK46 inhibitors in metastatic breast cancer. Learning objective two is to integrate real-world evidence into daily practice and decision-making in the metastatic breast cancer setting. Let us start with our first clinical case. Anna is a 70-year-old female diagnosed six years ago with invasive ductal carcinoma of the breast. Here are the tumor characteristics at the time of diagnosis. The tumor size was two centimeters. Pathology revealed that this is a moderately differentiated carcinoma or grade two. Hormone receptors are clearly expressed. Estrogen receptor, six out of eight. Progesterone receptors, seven out of eight. HER2 is considered to be negative and the sentinel node was negative. Anna underwent a lumpectomy and breast irradiation. She then received two years of tamoxifen followed by three years of letrozole. 20 months after adjuvant hormonal therapy completion, she presents with an asymptomatic recurrent disease. She has a good performance status of one. The results of the workup are the following. On the chest CT scan, there are three pulmonary nodules. The largest is two centimeters in size. The tumor marker CA153 is slightly elevated at 67 units per milliliter. A lung biopsy is performed and reveals metastatic adenocarcinoma with a strong expression of estrogen and progesterone receptors. The tumor is being sequenced and no big 3 ca mutations are detected. So let me now involve you more closely and ask you the following question. My personal choice in this patient will be the prescription of endocrine therapy plus a CDK46 inhibitor. Of course, we are dealing here with an older patient, typically a patient who is underrepresented in the randomized clinical trials. That's a situation where we need to look in the literature in search for real world evidence. Unfortunately, as yet, we do not have real world evidence on the use of CDK46 inhibitor with endocrine treatment in older women with metastatic luminal breast cancer. But we have access to a very interesting FDA pooled analysis of three randomized clinical trials that have compared the use of endocrine treatment alone with the use of endocrine treatment plus a CDK46 inhibitor as first line therapy for metastatic disease, namely the Paloma 2, Monadiza 2, and Monarch 3 trials. And the FDA have specifically looked 
at the outcome of all the women included in these three randomized trials. The results of this analysis are shown here. On the left, you see a comparison between women older than 70 and women younger than 70 in terms of progression-free survival with or without a CDK for six inhibitor in these three studies. The upper curve refers to the older women treated with a CDK for six inhibitor, and the third curve to the same older women treated with endocrine treatment alone. So clearly, the older women do benefit from the addition of the CDK for six inhibitor, and moreover, they seem to do slightly better or to have more indolent disease compared to the younger women. On the right, women older than 75 are compared to women younger than 75. And we can see that the magnitude of benefit from the incorporation of a CDK46 inhibitor into the first line treatment of advanced disease in these patients is exactly the same in older women compared to younger women. Let us now move to our second clinical case, Lisa. Lisa is a real patient of mine. She's 42 years old, she has no comorbidities, had, has had no children, and she was diagnosed 11 years prior with her two positive hormone receptor positive left breast cancer, treated with neoadjuvant FEC docetaxel, followed by tumorectomy and axillary dissection. She had two positive nodes and 21 millimeter residual invasive cancer in the breast. She then benefited from radiotherapy and was given trastuzumab for one year. She was also put on gozerilin and tamoxifen for five consecutive years. Unfortunately, Lisa has experienced a breast cancer relapse. That was three years ago, and it was a relapse in bone and in the left breast. A bone biopsy confirmed the metastatic relapse. Genic genetic testing was performed because of Lisa's young age, and it came back negative. No mutations were detected in the BRCA genes and other predisposing genes. Pathology based on uh, the left uh, breast biopsy shows that the tumor expresses hormone receptors, but this time is not overexpressing her too. The treatment proposed to Lisa at that time was a left mastectomy and a bilateral ophorectomy, followed by inclusion in the Paloma 2 trial, where she would receive letrozole with or without palbocycline. The successive treatments that Lisa received were first letrozole with or without palbocyclib. Uh, this was indeed a placebo control trial. So we didn't know if she received the CDK46 inhibitor. When she progressed after only eight months, she was treated with exemestin and evolimus, a treatment which stabilized the disease for five months. Then she was treated with capecitabine, which was of some help, but only for eight months. We then moved to paclitaxel weekly that she received for five months. And then again, a progression of the disease was documented. And finally, she was treated with doxorubicin for nine months. So this was a treatment that showed a slightly better efficacy than all the previous ones. So let me involve you actively and ask you the following question. Lisa has a new bone progression. What would you choose for systemic therapy? 
I should first tell you that we found out that Lisa, when she was randomized in the Paloma trial, received the endocrine treatment alone and did not receive palbocycline. What happened to Lisa with this new bone progression? I decided to try the combination of fulvestron and palbocycline as six-line treatment. And there came a big surprise. First of all, Lisa noticed an extremely rapid disappearance of her bone pain, something she had never experienced with any of the previous therapies. In March 2017, we documented a very nice partial metabolic response on her PET scan. A few months later, she showed a complete metabolic response on PET scan. And it's only in March 2019 that there were some signs of disease progression. In fact, Lisa started to show uh, severe neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. Initially, we thought that those were related to palbocycline, but they continued to worsen and that dictated a medullar biopsy, which unfortunately came back positive for cancer cells. So was it justified to try fulvestron and palbocyclib in Lisa, a heavily pretreated patient? As you can see, we have some publications in the literature that report the outcome of heavily pretreated patients receiving a CDK46 inhibitor with endocrine treatment. These three relatively small studies come from, from Europe, two from Belgium, including one from my institution and one from Croatia. And the three studies have in common the fact that the treated patients had been exposed to multiple lines of endocrine therapy and multiple lines of chemotherapy for their metastatic disease. On average, these patients received about five previous lines of treatment. This, of course, explains the relatively modest progression-free survival seen in the studies that ranges from three to five months, but it is nevertheless interesting to notice that clinical benefit rates are seen in these heavily pretreated patients in slightly over 50% of them. In the study from my institute, we saw no difference between the chance of disease stabilization, whether or not the patient had been previously treated with Everolinus. Importantly, none of these European studies noticed new safety signals with the use of a CDK46 inhibitor in heavily pretreated patients. It is important here to remember that we do have three CDK46 inhibitors that we can prescribe in the real world, palbocyclib, abemacyclib, and ribocyclib. In terms of side effects, these three ages are slightly different. Palbocyclib and ribocyclib will induce more neutropenia and thrombocytopenia compared to abemacyclib. Abemacyclib, in contrast, will be associated with more gastrointestinal toxicity. Also, with ribocyclib, one needs to monitor the QTC interval closely in the first few weeks of treatment. So oncologists have a choice between these agents and this choice can be based on specific patient characteristics, including comorbidities. In terms of anti-tumor activity, we have seen highly consistent results across all the randomized trials, independently from the CDK46 inhibitor 
tested. What we can see here are the clear improvement in progression-free survival seen when a CDK46 inhibitor is added to endocrine therapy as compared to endocrine therapy and a placebo. Very importantly, this meta-analysis based on published data also shows that CDK46 inhibitors when added to endocrine treatment will reduce the risk of death in these patients. In other terms, they will improve overall survival. So let us close with our SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Today, we have evaluated together real-world evidence on CDK46 inhibitors, and we have seen how these agents can benefit patients, real-world patients, with hormone receptor-positive metastatic breast cancer. I hope you will now be more confident in incorporating real-world evidence into your clinical practice. This is a way to get more confident in the use of these drugs in a broader patient population compared to the one that was typically involved in the randomized clinical trials. I thank you for your attention.